Odysseus, a legendary hero, crafty, brave, wise, strong, a fearless leader, and a faithful follower. In Homer's The Odyssey, Odysseus had weathered many storms since the battle at Troy and had proven his merit again and again. When he and his crew reach the shores of Thrinacia, however, they will encounter another test in the form of Helios' sacred cattle. Odysseus had been warned that they should not kill or harm the cattle in any way. Odysseus heeds this warning, but after he withdraws to pray in solitude, his starving crewmen kill the cattle make sacrifices to the gods, and feast on the meat. Odysseus, meanwhile, is unaware of these actions and is praying to the gods, asking for their divine assistance. The prayers and sacrifices that take place on this island are in some way representative of Greek religion, but in other ways contradict tradition. Throughout the scene that takes place on Thrinakia, Homer challenges traditional Greek views of piety by showing that prayer is more important than ritual. Heart is more important than actions, and confident faith is more important than reason. In ancient Greece, individuals practiced their religion through ritual. In their study of religion in the ancient Greek city, historians Louis Zeidman and Pauline Pintel describe Greek ritual as a complex set of actions affected by or in the name of an individual or a community. These actions serve to organize space and time to define relationship between men and the gods, and to set in their proper place the different categories of mankind and the links which bind them together. Each Greek city or people group had its own patron deity and distinct values, but they all had one thing in common, their emphasis on rituals, such as sacrifices, feasts, libations, prayers, hymns, and festivals. On the island of Thrinakia, Odysseus and his men practice the rituals of sacrifice, libations, and prayers. In Thrinakia, food is scarce. Odysseus's men have thus far obeyed Odysseus's command not to touch Helios' cattle, but Odysseus has gone off by himself to pray. The men are starving, and so, in Odysseus's absence, they decide to kill and eat the sacred cattle of the sun god. In order to make this killing acceptable to the gods, the men choose to make the cattle a sacrifice. <coughs> to conduct a proper sacrifice, there are four steps that must be carried out in a very specific way. Choosing the sacrifice, preparing the sacrifice, killing the sacrifice, and feasting after the sacrifice. Making a sacrifice in the correct way is of the utmost importance, because as Jan Bremer in his study of Greek normative animal sacrifice writes, Proper performance was indicative of a man's relationship with the gods. There were two requirements for choosing the proper animal for a sacrifice. The animal must be without blemish and must be domesticated. Helios's cattle were without blemish and so meet the requirements for perfection mandated by Greek tradition. However, the sacrifice also must be domesticated. This is not because the gods disapproved of wild animals, but because a domesticated sacrifice means that the worshiper is giving from their resources, their own valuable livestock. The gods do not reject the sacrifice of Odysseus's men because the cattle are wild, but because the men aren't giving of their possessions. They aren't giving anything up economically. Instead, the men are taking something from the gods and giving a smaller portion back. In preparing the sacrifice, Odysseus's men attempt to carry it out as well as they can, considering their circumstances. A proper sacrifice requires an offering of barley and wine to pour out libations. These things are not found on Thrinakia, so instead the crew plucked the leaves that shone on a tall oak, having no barley meal, to strew the victims. Then, as they had no wine, they made libation with clear spring water. These substitutions only serve to emphasize the impiety of the crew. The issue is the same as their choice of sacrifice. The men were not giving of their resources, but instead taking things which belonged to the gods, the cattle, the leaves, the water, claiming those things as their own, and then giving them back to the gods. Before killing the sacrifice, the attention of the gods had to first be attracted by a prayer in which the petitioner reminded the deity of his or her pre-existing relationship with the petitioner, according to classicist Robert Garland. 
Odysseus's men perform the proper prayers, but there is no evidence of a pre-existing relationship between Helios and these men. There is no evidence that the men performed these rituals as a way to honor the gods at all. <coughs> Looking at the outward appearance, Odysseus's men seem to be trying to make the sacrifice as well as they are able. The true problem, though, dwells in the hearts of Odysseus's men. They aren't making the sacrifice, pouring out libations, and praying their prayers because they want to honor the gods. The men simply want to quiet the growling of their own stomachs. Meanwhile, Odysseus chooses a different method of dealing with his hunger pangs. Before the crew made their sacrifice, Odysseus had withdrawn to pray. He says, <clears throat> So one day I withdrew to the interior to pray to the gods in solitude, for hope that one might show me some way of salvation. Slipping away, I struck across the island to a sheltered spot out of the driving gale. I washed my hands there and made supplication to the gods who own Olympus, all the gods. Homer wants to portray Odysseus's prayer as a more noble action than the crew's sacrifice. But why does Homer use prayer as the ultimate expression of worship rather than sacrifice? In Greek tradition, praying without offering a sacrifice was wrong. The gods could easily be offended because they are expected to give without first receiving something from the mortals. However, Odysseus takes, takes this chance and asks the gods to provide for him. Traditionally, Greek petitioners would never pray in solitude, as Odysseus does here. Praying silently and alone is a common experience among Christians, but as classicist William Furley observes, this private and meditative aspect of Christian piety is very much at odds with ancient Greek prayer. For ancient Greek prayer and hymn singing does everything it can to draw attention to itself as a public display. In this passage, however, instead of the traditional mode of prayer, Homer seems to be encouraging a more private mode of prayer. Odysseus, in his humility, is approaching the gods as a meek petitioner. Homer wanted to emphasize that prayer should be the main emphasis of a ceremony, not just a rite to be performed before a meal. In this scene, Homer seems to suggest that the gods are not seeking sacrifices in and of themselves, but they are seeking the hearts of their petitioners. According to Greek tradition, the indicator of a proper heart in the act of sacrifice was an epiphany. An epiphany, according to classicist Verity Platt, occurs when human acts of worship are balanced by a corresponding bestowal of divine presence. This divine presence is the epiphany a becoming visible of immortal form to mortal eyes. However, the sacrifice of Odysseus's men is not rewarded with an epiphany. Rather than revealing himself to the mortals, Helios demands that the men pay the death penalty for their wrongdoing, or else he would go down forever to light the dead men in the underworld. As a result of this sacrifice, Helios wants to remove himself from mankind forever and spend his days in the underworld. The response of Helios is the exact opposite of an epiphany. It is a divine concealment. On the other hand, Odysseus is the one to whom Athena reveals herself, not because he makes a great sacrifice or performs any rites, but perhaps because the intention of his heart is to serve the gods. Odysseus's humble prayer was worth more to the gods than the ignoble sacrifice of the most perfect cattle. This is what Homer believes to be true piety. The rituals are only significant insofar as they reflect the true feelings of the petitioner. The scene in Thrunakia encapsulates the sense of religion through all of the Odyssey. The contrast of Odysseus to those who are less pious gives the reader a clear picture of what is required in Homer's ideal of piety as opposed to the traditional view of piety. The emphasis is on the hearts of the mortals and the emotional side of religion. I think Homer believes it is important to challenge traditional views of Greek piety because rituals have a potential for stagnancy. This has been a concern in societies throughout time. It is as much a concern for Christians today as it was for Greeks in Homer's time. If all religion is based on actions and rights, there is no personal involvement. Homer wants to encourage the Greek people to be emotionally invested in their religion and have personal relationships with their gods. He is urging the Greek people to know their gods, instead of just knowing about them. Homer used the ideal man, a famous hero, to subtly teach the populace what being a true worshiper of the gods meant. 
the Greek definition of piety had been acts of service. Homer redefines piety as love, which manifests itself in acts. meditative prayer and solitude more resembles uh, Christianity than um, traditional Greek worship. Do you think that the two manifest differently? The prayers is different because the gods that they worship versus the god that we worship are inherently different. Um, but the real difference in the prayers is the mode of prayer. Uh, there are Christian, like times in the Christian community where you do pray out loud in public, like uh, in front of the church, um, but it's really the heart of it. Um, in the quote that I used about um, Greek prayer, it said that Greek prayer does everything it can to draw attention to itself, and that's not the intention of Christians who are praying in public either. Does that answer your question? I think so, yeah. that was well supported and, and the use of your pictures to go along with your uh, premises was just very insightful. As you've read this piece and then written about this, what did you learn that you didn't know? Um, I think that I didn't realize how different Homer's view of piety was than traditional Greek views of piety. Um, I have been interested in Greek culture and religion <clears throat> since I was in middle school, <coughs> but I didn't read the Odyssey in its, ori not, not original form, but um, like in its complete form until I was in college, and so I didn't really realize the disparity that was there. Kitty, what was the context for this? Um, I wrote this paper as a honors component for um, Archetypes of Western Literature. I find it interesting that many of the requirements of the sacrifice parallel to what the Jews in the Old Testament have told them about this exactly yeah. like mm -hmm. yeah. And yet for different purposes. Did you see anything that, that pertains to the shedding of blood as a uh, as a uh, means or requirement for redemption in, in Greek thought? No, I didn't come across that. For Greeks, the sacrifices was more <clears throat> to appease the gods rather than to cover their own sins because they worshiped gods that they knew were imperfect. They didn't feel the need to be perfect themselves. I see an interesting parallel to the Old Testament when King Saul was told to destroy everything and instead he kept the best and then sacrificed some of it. Yeah. And God said, I don't want sacrifice. I want you to obey me. That's interesting. Consistent theme. Okay. Good. Thank you, Kitty.